anecdotal stories you have of people that had all these different conditions, chronic pain, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic fatigue, all these different issues, skin issues, eczema, all these different things that they were treating with medication. It wasn't working. They were experiencing side effects. They start eliminating everything from their diet except for meat, and all of a sudden these problems go away. I mean, there's too many of those stories for it to be ignored. Yeah, it's it's... I've been astounded by the number of number of you know just crazy crazy things that have happened and and again it's not you know it's not that you know that is the the most profound rigorous type of type of science that you can do but it's it, you can't ignore it at this point there are literally probably hundreds of thousands of people now trying I go all over I've been all over the world now talking about this and I get people from Germany and Greece and you know China and Japan and Africa that have all done this and the same thing look I was sick and now I'm not sick anymore and so whether or not that is you know enough evidence to say this is you know a, a good treatment you know I can't say that but you can't deny it's happening and I'm I've been trying to get research done. In fact, there was a study done out of Harvard University two years ago. I don't know if you saw that. So uh, there's a guy named David Ludwig, who is a senior author. And David, I've talked to him. He is the most ethical, you know, just like he does not want any money from industry. He refuses to take anything. He's like, I want to make sure I do pure science. And they did a study, and they looked at 2,000 people on a carnivore diet. And basically what they saw was like 95% of the people, significant improvement across the board. Now, uh, the thing that was interesting to me is that diabetics, we had like 225 diabetics in that population, 92% of them came off all their insulin. These are all type twos, you know, that's so, they, insane. so that's, that's, you know, hundred percent came off all these other injectable drugs, the GLP-1 receptor agonist, which we've heard so much about lately, you know, the Ozempics and things like that. Semaglutide. Yeah. right. Came off, uh, something called a PCSK9 inhibitor. No, sorry. The SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, 84% came off their metformin. So it's just like, this is cl clearly a... Uh, at least at, at the very least a therapeutic tool and that's how I push this I don't tell like you know I wrote a book on this I didn't say humans are carnivores I said humans are opportunistic omnivores if we were if we were living in the middle ages and we came across we we're out hunting mammoths and all of a sudden you know the ice ages were out and we came across a, a tree full of tr tree full of Twinkies I mean we'd play oh shit I'm gonna eat that <laughs> you know, we'd, try, right? we'd eat it right because you know we would but I mean yeah. it's and, and you know there's people there's obviously people that eat plants that aren't dead and are doing okay so we're omnivores but from a disease, you know, mitigation standpoint, I mean, a, ther a therapeutic carnivore diet is tremendously effective. I mean, it's one of the more effective things I've seen across the board. And so, at the very least, you know, you'd say, let's explore that aspect of it. Because, you know, like I said, there's people that are suffering. And we've got so many people. I know we, we're, we may talk about vegan, carnivore, all the, you know, everything in between. But I think at the end of the day, it's, everybody's eating processed garbage. I mean, we're, eating, yes. we're just eating bullshit. I mean, and, and that is really... One of the problems, and the and the one thing, and you said this, Joe, when you eat just meat, you're like, I don't want that other bullshit because yeah. you're, you're you're actually satiated, and this is a thing that's, I think, problematic because if you look at, interesting, there was a study that just came out now looking at um, the financial incentive for ultra processed food. Why do we have this stuff? So you look at the big uh, asset management groups. You know, you've got BlackRock, you've got Vanguard, you've got uh, State Street uh, and Capital, and I can't remember the, the full names on these, but but those guys collectively own huge portions of Nestle, Pest PepsiCo, all these other processed food companies. And they also have they also have significant shares in pharmaceutical manufacturers. So you basically you sicken the population by feeding them garbage and then you just you you you, you profit on their on their disease. And I think that's what's going on. And I think it's really unfortunate, you know, and I think you know some people make an argument, you know, is it is a net is there a net benefit from feeding more people versus how many people are getting sick? And I think there's a point where, you know, the line goes, you know, if if, if every if most people are getting sick from this and only a few people are benefiting, then you've you've kind of crossed that line of, you know, does it does it is it for the greater good? And then it becomes into you know, the realm of almost evil in my in my mind. Well, I think it started out with just trying to make money. I sure, mean, that's sure. that's what started out with the processed foods. And I think then they realize, well, now you're you're selling more medication to these people. So you make more money on top of that more money. I don't even think it's a conspiracy. I think it's just opportunity. I think they just look at profits, and that's what these corporations are established for. That their bottom line is they're supposed to make as much money as they can for their shareholders. Yep. That's their responsibility. Their responsibility is to have like a cute cartoon guy that sells you sugary cereal. 
Because, you know, when I was a kid, that's what I wanted. I want Cocoa Pops. Right. I yeah. wanted Frank Captain and, Crunch. Frank and Frank and all that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why all that garbage is like, it's so addictive. It's so delicious, you know, and it's uh, clearly targeted for young people. Clearly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that paper that I, that I talked about, and I think, I, I, you know, it's in that list that I give Jamie, but um, it basically says this is the whole thing. They, they make tremendous short-term profits for their for their shareholders, and, and that's yeah. why they do it. So, it, yeah, it's clearly financially driven. You can't blame them. I mean, this is what any business wants to exactly. do. It wants to be successful. Exactly. So it's, it's about making money like everything is, really. Yeah, that's what they do. I think the cutting the bullshit out is the biggest factor in this whole carnivore diet thing. I really do. I mean, I, I, I definitely think there's there's obviously meat itself – Regardless of the bullshit and the propaganda, meat is the most nutrient-dense food you can eat. All this crap where they say that meat causes cancer. If meat caused cancer, most people would have cancer. 95-plus percent of the population on Earth eats meat. And all this propaganda you hear about, you know, you're going to get cancer, you're, you're gonna, diseases are going to go, all these different things. It does not seem to be the case in people that just eat meat. When you're looking at my experience, I have not, and again, anecdotal, I've never met anybody that went on this diet that didn't have a positive result. Everybody that I know that goes on this diet, now clearly, there's g genetic differences. Some people have, uh, well, definitely there's people that have that um, Lone Star Tick issue, where a, a buddy of mine has that. He got, he got bit by a tick, and he developed an allergy to red meat. It's a real pain in the ass for him, and it went away. He he had it for a year, and it went away, and it started to come back again. Um, that, but that's rare. For most people, red meat is a very nutrient dense food. Yeah, that's 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 absolutely clear. I mean, and and your point is, you know, if you get rid of the garbage, you're gonna have you're gonna have a benefit, whatever diet you go on. I think that's clear. And you know, when we talk about, because you mentioned you're not totally strict, I am. You know, fairly strict, but I'm not religious about it. I don't sit there like you know. For instance, my my son's birthday was, you know, a couple of days ago on Thanksgiving. Cake? I had some. I had a piece of pumpkin pie, man. Nice. So I, you know, I hadn't had had that in ten years. But I'm like, you know, no big deal. I didn't die. But it's not like I said. My diet literally is probably. 98 percent red meat i mean i just i just eat steaks every day you know it's yeah. kind of crazy you know? well the videos are hilarious of yeah. you eating steaks listening to vegan propaganda yeah. just yeah. you have a big cutting board and a giant cleaver and you're slicing off pieces of tri-tip while you're watching vegan propaganda and smiling yeah. hey woman since your man ain't got no heart what's going on apartment tonight i'll show you a real man there you what go. what fuck you hey woman since your man ain't got no heart What's going on in my apartment tonight? I'll show you a real man. There you go. What?